Okay, so nakagawa na tayo ng income statement where inalaman natin na ang profit ni Wedding RS for the month of May 2019 is 35,000 pesos. Gumawa na rin tayo ng statement of changes in equity where inalaman naman natin na ang value ng owner's equity ni Guevara sa business is 271,000 pesos. Meaning, yung 271,000 is yan yung portion or interest ni Guevara sa business niya na wedding or us. And gumawa na rin tayo ng balance sheet where in, nalaman natin na ang total assets ni Wedding RS is 546,700 <clears throat> total liabilities or pagkakautang ni Wedding RS which is 275,700 and yung equity which is 271,000 pesos na nanggaling dito sa statement of changes in equity na ginawa natin <clears throat> ngayon ang susunod natin gagawin is yung statement of cash flows Mahalaga rin na makita ng may-ari ng entity or ng users ng financial statements kung gaano ginagastos ni entity yung kanyang cash, kung saan napupunta yung cash ni entity, kung ano yung mga items na nare-receive ni entity as cash. Itong 22,200 na to is i-analyze natin siya kung bakit naging ganito yung amount na lang ng cash ni Wedding RS. Paan, ano ang naging breakdown ng 22,200 na yan? Doon natin malalaman kung gaano kadami na cash na nareceive from customers si Wedding RS. Gaano kadami ng cash yung binayad niya sa suppliers, sa sweldo ng mga empleyado, sa rent, and sa office, and sa, sa office expenses. Doon natin lahat yon makikita sa gagawin nating financial statement na which is na statement of cash flows. Statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows provides information about the cash receipts and cash payments of an entity during the period. It is a formal statement that classifies cash receipts or inflows, cash payments or outflows into operating, investing, and financing activities. So, statement of cash flows, doon natin makikita Lahat ng cash flows ni entity, lahat ng mga perang pumasok sa entity and lahat ng mga perang lumabas sa entity. And yung mga inflows or cash receipts or yung mga papasok na pera and yung mga cash payments or yung outflows or yung mga palabas na pera or pabayad ay kinaklasify siya into operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Cash payments from operating activities. So, itong mga bullet point na to is yan yung mga example ng activities under operating, investing, and financing activities. Cash receipts from operating activities. So, ito yung mga examples. <clears throat> Receipt from sale of goods and performance of services. Receipts from royalties, fees, commissions, and other revenues. Payment to suppliers of goods and services. Employees or yung mga pasweldo sa empleyado, taxes, yung mga buwis, <clears throat> interest, and other operating expenses. So basically, yung operating expenses is ito yung mga cash flows na incoming, na inflows or outflows from normal operations ng entity. Yung mga cash flows na nangyayari from operating activities or normal operations ng entity is yun yung mga nagpa-fall under ng cash flows from operating activities. Cash flows from investing activities. Receipts from sale of property and equipment. Okay. Kapag nagbenta ng PPE or property plan and equipment sa si entity, yung cash na marireceive doon is classified as investing activities. Receipt from sale of investments in debt and equity securities. So kapag may mga investments si entity na binenta niya, into other entity, yung cash receipts from sale of investments is considered as cash flows from investing activities. Payments to acquire property and equipment. So, kapag bumibili si entity ng mga property and equipment, siya ay investing activities. 
Payments to acquire debt or equity securities. So, kapag bumibili naman ng investment or kapag nag-i-invest si entity sa debt or equity securities, classified as investing activities. Payments to make loans to others generally in the form of notes receivable. So, kapag nagpa-utang si entity na in the form of notes receivable, siya ay investing activities. Receipts from collection of loans to others generally in the form of notes receivable. So, syempre, pag nagpa-utang ka in, gen, in the form of notes receivable or kapag nagpa-utang si entity in the form of notes receivable, siya ay investing activities. And since na may nagpa, nagpa-utang si entity, magbabayad, expected yan or nag expect siya na magbabayad yung kanyang, inuta, yung kanyang pinag or yung kanyang debtor or yung umutang sa kanya. So, yung receipts from collection of loans generally in the form of loan receivable so kapag nagbayad yung debtor ni entity sa kanya investing activities ang classification ng cash flow. Cash flows from financing activities. Receipts from investment by the owner. So kapag nag-i-invest si owner sa business or pag nagdadagdag siya ng investment sa kanyang business ang cash flows from investments by owners ay financing activities. Receipts from issuance of notes payable. So, ibig sabihin, kapag nangutang si entity in the form of notes payable, ang cash na receive is under or classified as financing activities. Payments to owners in the form of withdrawal. So, yung mga withdrawals made by the owner ay financing activities. Payment to settle notes payable. So, kapag may notes payable, payments doon is financing activities. Yung receipts from issuance of notes payable kapag umutang ka is financing din. At kapag binayaran mo naman yung notes payable from your borrowings, ang cash flows, to pay, ang cash flows from payments to settle notes payable ay financing activities. Kung ang operating is normally Nasa ka, ang cash flows sa operating activities ng entity, ang investing naman is normally sa investments or property and equipment. Ang financing activities naman is normally sa investments ng owners, withdrawals ng owners, and yung issuance of notes payable. So kapag umutang si entity at kapag nagbabayad ng utang si entity is financing activities. Okay, so gagawa na tayo ngayon ng statement of cash flows. Sa paggawa ng statement of cash flows, kailangan nating malaman yung lahat ng transactions affecting cash. Makikita natin yon sa ledger account ng cash account. But this time, titingin tayo ngayon sa journal entries na ginawa natin nung tayo ay nasa step 2 ng accounting cycle. Dito tayo titingin kasi yung general ledger na ginawa natin dun sa step 3 ng accounting cycle ng discussion is wala tayong nilagay dun na remarks. Hindi natin malalaman kung yung classification ng cash flow kung siya ba ay operating, investing, and financing kapag tinilang natin yung ledger na ginawa natin dun sa step 3. Kaya bumalik tayo ngayon dun sa ginawa nating journal entries ng step 2. Makikita natin yung cash transactions or yung lahat ng cash transactions ni entity for the month of May. And sa journal entries, makaklassify natin kung siya ba ay cash flow from operating, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing depende sa journal entry na ginawa dito sa journal. So, gagawin natin is titingnan natin ang lahat ng cash transactions ni Wedding are as, then ikaklassify natin siya sa operating, which is dito natin ilalagay sa dilaw na index card. Kapag investing naman, is dito natin take down sa blue. And kapag financing naman, is dito sa kulay pink na index card. Okay. Start na tayo. May 1, merong entry na debit cash, credit Guevara, Cap Guevara Capital. So, meaning, may cash na involved sa transaction na nangyari nung May 1. Therefore, Considered ito sa paggawa ng statement of cash flow. 
So, based sa entry, debit cash, credit Gavera Capital, so, siya ay cash inflow kasi padagdag siya na cash and yung classification niya, siya ba ay operating, siya ba ay investing, or siya ba ay financing. So, yung May 1 transaction, debit cash, credit capital, is siya ay investing activity kasi siya ay cash received from investment ng owner. And kapag cash investment from owner is under ng financing and financing na classification ng cash flow kasi pinifinance ni owner ng cash si entity. Therefore, itong May 1 is dito siya sa financing siya napupunta. So, lalagay natin yung transaction. We have investment investment from owner at what amount? 250,000 pesos. So, na-consider na natin itong May 1 transaction. <clears throat> May 2, ah sorry, May 1, debit prepaid rent credit cash, 8,000 pesos. Okay, may cash na involved but this time outflow kasi credit, palabas yung cash. And, classify na rin siya kung operating, investing, and financing. So, si siya ay connected sa rent, involving rent, kahit prepaid pa yan, so considered pa rin siya as cash flow from operating activity. So, dito natin siya ilalagay sa operating na nalagay natin ay prepaid rent yan at what amount 8,000 pero negative kasi siya ay cash outflow kanina positive 250 kasi cash inflow so na consider na natin yung 8,000 pesos sunod Debit cash credit notes payable. So, nangutang si entity sa banko. Okay. Ang cash received from borrowings ay magpo-fall ng financing activity. So, lalagay natin dito yung 210,000 pesos. So, siya ay borrowings na 210,000 pesos positive kasi debit cash. Cash inflow. Pag negative, cash outflow. Okay. Sunod, no entry. Okay. May 4, debit service vehicle, credit cash, 420,000 pesos. Kapag ang cash transaction ay involving service vehicle or any property and equipment account, siya ay magpo-fall under ng investing activities. Therefore, yung, yung 420,000 is siya ay sa investing activity. So, lalagay natin dito is payment to acquire service vehicle na 420,000 pesos na negative. Kasi credit yung cash. Siya ay cash outflow. Debit prepaid insurance credit cash. So, meron na namang cash transaction. And siya ay related sa insurance which is part ng normal operations ni or normal operating cycle ni wedding RS. So, considered siya sa cash flow as operating activity. So, lagay natin dito prepaid insurance na 14,400 na negative kasi siya ay Cash outflow. Credit sa cash. Sunod, May 5. Debit office equipment, credit cash, credit accounts payable. So, ibig sabihin, bumili ng office equipment si entity. And office equipment is a property and equipment account. Kahit hindi pa siya fully paid, which is 15,000 pesos lang yung binayad as down payment. At may cash transaction din na involved, considered na yan as, pay, as investing activities ni et entity. Payment to acquire office equipment. Yan. Na 15,000 lang. Kasi yun lang naman yung cash na 
involved dun sa acquisition ng office equipment nung May 5. Credit cash, 15,000 na negative. Okay, tapos na tayo dito. Next, May 8, debit supplies, credit accounts payable. Consider ba siya sa cash flow? Hindi, kasi wala namang cash transaction na involved dun sa May 8. May 9, debit accounts payable, credit cash. 10,000 pesos. So, meron na namang cash involved and payment to suppliers is considered as operating activity. So, lagay natin dito, payments of accounts payable na 10,000 pesos na negative. Kasi siya ay cash outflow. May 10, debit cash credit consulting revenue. So, siya ay considered sa cash flow. Kasi merong cash na transaction na involved. And revenues or cash receipts from customers is considered as operating activities ni entity. Therefore, dito natin ilalagay yung na receive from customers. So, ito ay cash receive from customers na 26,400 na positive kasi siya ay cash inflow. May 13, debit salaries expense credit cash. And salaries or payment of salaries is part ng operating activities ng entity. Therefore, lalagay natin to sa operating activities ni entity. Salaries. Yan. Na 6,600 pesos. 